Very nice. Nice close there today. Thank you so much for everybody joining here. The market recap show. Actually, I don't need this in my ear. We don't have too many earnings coming through on the board today. We will look at and we'll talk about Dada was one of the bigger ones that is going to report uh, here tonight. And then I want to look at possibly GameStop and CCL. Maybe some future looks right there as we'll go into while well, you guys can call it up. Our topic board coming through as we log in right now. A little bit of a spicy day, especially into the closes. We had a nice push back here into the close um, for the NASDAQ. So that's XLE. XLE today, the winner of them all, man, up another 1% as energy gets going today. Um, nice move up for XOM. Nice move up for XLE. But it was the NASDAQ that sort of had that downside push there near the end of the day. Let me flip this over and see what do we have on here. A three-minute chart. So there it is. A little bit of a bleed into the close on the NASDAQ. Just pulling back. Um, you know, we had a nice move. I was short up there, so that was good. Again, the reason why I felt the short could come in, I just, I don't know. I wasn't sure if we were going to get through yesterday's, uh, yesterday's uh, Friday's levels, which are up here. We didn't. We came pretty close. Nice push back down on the triple Qs into the end of the day. Thus giving us a red day, but pretty flat overall considering where we were. So again, nice trading into the close if you were short. Uh, shout out to everybody that's here right now. We won't do a roll call now, but this is what it looks like when it does come through. Shout out to Kyle, shout out to Bears vs. Bulls, Hold My Beer, and everybody as well. I gotta give a big shout out to Obi. Thank you for all his work today on the main show, and he'll be back tomorrow into Friday where we don't have a show. Shout out uh, for Good Friday and everybody. Well, you can rewatch the podcast. Maybe we'll release the podcast on Friday. Good Friday. Part one and part two, yeah. Maybe we're going to change that. Oh, we're actually working on guests as well. That should be a fun thing to do. We'll switch it up there. So, hey, shout out to everybody that's with us today. UNG Gold with a nice move today uh, to the upside. So we like gold. Um, nice move back into 200. Watch out for that top. Again, holding some of these bids. The big mover today, though, guys, um, honestly... It's the biggest and the baddest of them all. Let's just give a big shout out to Bitcoin. Bitcoin and crypto, big movement to the upside there. If we go over to a daily chart for BTC, look at this, man. Just waited for today. Nice move up. Kind of did nothing over the weekend. Comes in today and blasts higher. I don't know if this is news related or not, but crypto definitely taking off uh, to the upside. We will have Michael Noss coming through very, very soon. And look at this play. I was almost called up MSTR on this Bitcoin chart. But this is basically a cheat code right now. MSTR, we talked about this on the podcast. Many of you wanted to know why is MSTR, which just hold Bitcoin, going up exponentially every single day. Well, the reason is they're highly levered. So what MSTR MicroStrategy has done is they ask for your money in the form of convertible debt offerings into shares or just paying three, four, five percent. So people are lending them money at three or four, five percent. And while they're doing is being quite obvious, going in and buying more Bitcoins. So as Bitcoin continues to go to the upside, these guys on borrowed money are getting this natural bump up. So MSTR, genius move, man. Michael Saylor sailing away on those cruise ships because Bitcoin giving their traders another 23% to the upside right there starting to go. Bears versus Bulls, if there's any questions for Michael Noss in the chat, let's get those going. We will ask him. I got some of my own, uh, so we'll do that as well. Um, all right, financials downside a little bit today as we go over some sectors here. Um, let's just check out Dada. Did they release their earnings yet? What? This name is $2 a share. What am I even covering this for? Uh, all right, um, into the close. We'll see if there's any actions here at all. Wait a second. Why, doesn't, why don't I have a uh, time frame? Where do I have the properties? This should be, yeah, okay, show post market. Okay, so nothing happening yet. Dada here in the aftermarket. What's happening with Apple? So again, these are three-minute charts. Let's draw it down to a one-minute chart. We had a nice move down on an imbalance there for Apple. Again, we looked at this. This was a sticky note play today. Um, although we weren't convinced about Apple, we talked about, let's see what the market wanted for Apple today. So they actually wanted higher um, for a bit. Comes into the 200 period. What a great fade that was on AAPL. 71.70 pushes all the way back down. We'll look for a short in and around $72 
tomorrow for Apple. Um, the trade really of the day, in my opinion, let's go to a three minute chart, was A, this flush early on Apple. Uh, but again, you'd had to like, how would you know that was gonna stop at 169.50? We actually had this short. We'll talk about that. I think it was Meta. Hydration Nation. Meta into five bills right there. What a flush. Yeah, too, too long talk. What is, TLDR is too long, didn't read, right? Or don't, don't read. Um, okay, so nice move to the downside there. Flushed into five bills. And then look at that, man. What a wick to that bottom in a three-minute chart. Even if you look at a one-minute chart for Meta, this is where you got to have all your ducks lined up, right? Because I don't know how you see some of these trades uh, on Meta. Let me just zoom back out there. But there it is on a one-minute chart. Great opportunity to get that dip, okay? The RSI in a one-minute hits 20... Uh, 19s there on a one minute. So that would have been a good buying opportunity again. But hey, in the face of panic, you have to know your levels. That would have been a good one right there. So we wanted to watch a little bit about crypto on the sector watch. I don't see that much, man. I and mean, we could ask Michael about uranium and some of these solar names. But honestly, we've talked to this guy a lot about that. Um, some of these tick downs, you're going to look for some support down here near recent bottoms for both uranium and solar levels. So they just continue to be interesting names, but I don't really think they're too traded. The SPY, again, near and at all time highs. Again, we can zoom in just to see some of those levels. But again, the SPY, we had a high level there on Thursday, Friday, and then today, just trying to hold above 500 bucks for the spiders. So that's a play that we have to watch out for. Uh, we'll just keep checking on data to see if there's any releases. I see some people uh, asking about that. We have it written up there. Uh, again, the week ahead. I know it's getting cut off a little bit, but that's so data not doing anything. What I want to talk about was, and maybe we can do this, Michael, uh, if you're listening. Let's have a quick look at GameStop because GameStop earnings coming post-market on the 26th. So GameStop's had a really nice move up, man. I mean, if we go into the daily chart here for GameStop, today's move, pretty good. But look at why I wanted to talk about the daily for GameStop. We've had a beautiful level here of 13 bucks. That's held, okay? Today up 17%. Is that part of the Reddit trade? We've seen Reddit go off today as well. GameStop with the nice move upside. Again, 22% short float, looking to turn profit uh, this next quarter. We'll see if GameStop can do it. We're not gonna sit here and analyze like, hey, what if it turns profitable? What does that mean? I mean, the amount of shares that are outstanding on GameStop, you still see, uh, where's the float? Tw uh, 270 million shares, so we're not really gonna look at that. Its market cap is pretty small, I believe. No, that's cash. Ooh, a nice cash position of 1.2 billion. That's for sure. Where can I find market cap? Yeah, four and a half right now on the market cap. So this is another interesting name to come. Watch out for 16, 17%. Expected move on this one, 20% on earnings. We'll see if GameStop can hold this $13 level. Another interesting name that I wanted to look at, that's really been cooking. Again, RCL has made a nice move to the upside. We'll see if Carnival can do something similar. Again, a nice market cap of 19 billion. This name's really been flushed out, back down in October, down to 10. And again, I asked Obi this, what was up with your travel plans, you know? He again got offered to take another flight because flight overbooked. So I, I like the travel names here. CCL, let's see if that can get going. And look at this convergence, 250 period, talking down here at 16. That looks like a good opportunity to buy some CCL, but for me it's GameStop. That would be the more exciting name coming. We will ask Michael about that. Let's check out what Reddit's doing here. Whoa, we don't need to look at it daily for Reddit. Um, I wanted to see a quick look here in the after hours. Again, it's gonna be another hydration moment for me. All right, uh, Reddit right now, nice move up. 60 bucks, $61 uh, to the upside here. Um, all right, someone shorted here. I'm just talking about what's happening in the chat right now. Uh, shorted 100 Bitcoin, 100 Bitcoin. No, you didn't, uh, right there, okay. We'll find out what's going on right now with Bitcoin. Uh, but again, uh, if you have a question, yes, tag bears versus bulls. We'll ask Michael Noss a few questions there today. We did have Lucid on our mind early. Now, 
For me, Lucid was a good trade, LCID. This is my trading platform here today. So it will call up, again, some of the trades that we put on. Here's Lucid, good trade, fell in. We talked about this when we had Michael on early uh, on today. Lucid was up 30, 40%. All right, it really fell in. We talked about buying it off of the 200 and VWAP was all over the place. So unless I can get a tick replay, it'll be hard to tell. But we bought some in front of three bucks, got it out into some of those pre-market levels. It did shoot higher. We were trying to see about that, didn't work out. We got out and did not reload. So Lucid off that billion dollar from the Saudi investment, an affiliate of the PIF, they can't be happy, but again, billion dollars into this name. Not sure if it was optionable or not. So don't know if, if it's eligible strike price at a certain level, but not a good day for Lucid. Was up 30 or 40%. And then we had, unfortunately, puke all over myself on this one. Looks like my kids won't be able to get that new iPad because we threw a couple hundred bucks at Fisker in the teens and it looks like that couple hundred bucks is going to go down the toilet right there. Uh, but we'll wait, we'll wait. Um, not sure. I don't know where this name's going to go. I'd have to find out the story on this because Fisker is going to go down to the pink sheets. I don't know if that's today, tomorrow, or the next, but Fisker Definitely a nice little downside move on that one. So there goes Fisker. I am not doubling down. Maybe at a penny, maybe, yeah, because... All right, I'll do it then. I'll do it. I'll do it at a penny because you know what? If you buy stock at a penny, how much can you lose? All of it. Yeah, see, that's the problem there. Fabian's like, you can only lose a penny. Yeah, but it's 100% of everything that you bought. So we'll have to watch out for that as Fisker. Its best days are definitely behind it. FSR. The big trade for me though was this triple Q short. So we actually traded the NASDAQ short side there. And I don't know what kind of feeling we got. We were short there early against that and we got punched out right at 11.50, right into noon. And look, this happens to your boy. We get punched out before the tank. Yeah, just if Frank would have came earlier, right? That Frank the tank would have told us about that. Uh, but then it came back in and I said, you know what? Let's see what happens again. But this time we didn't put on a huge amount of trade, a huge amount of shares. When it bounced up into here, at that point, we actually zoomed back out. I don't know if we're going to be able to see Fridays, but I really wanted to work off some of these levels into Friday's close. So luckily enough, we had some targets to the upside that didn't get broken. And then when this fell back in, it was just a good trade into the close. Therefore, the TQ is definitely falling off. Let's check out our friend, not WinVidia. We didn't trade it today. Okay, under 950. NVIDIA losing some steam here um, into the close and into the pre-market. Remember, our charts, I think, will shut off in around 415. So we'll just have to watch tape or level one here, or level two. But coming in, it looks like NVIDIA may have a problem here holding this 946. And again, if you're gonna trade NVIDIA, look how simple this is. All right, I'll leave it at that. Watch this. Look at this move right there. Up to 946, failed, boom. That's a tough, excuse me, that's a tough trade. You had to know to be long. But look where this comes back into. So this is what's created a many win, uh, winning opportunities for us here on NVIDIA. Even as I zoom this back out to Friday, like take shots. That's, that's basically not like Little John shots like that, Fabian. Shot, 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 shots. Everybody. Uh, but yeah, take shots after you've closed your position. Whether or not it's a winning trade or not, maybe have a celebratory one. Like, whoosh, no more stress. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like it's worth a shot on this. Um, NVIDIA pulls back in into that level. Could be worth it there, you know, buying that. And again, you just got to assess your risk, but we'll watch out for 946 tomorrow coming in right now, 946. Also, look at that, man. Tops on Friday, good little level there for NVIDIA. You should have probably had that. And just like the top side right here, we'll look tomorrow, 965, 966. But I think it was Michael on the show last week. It was definitely Brian. And I think we had like ideas here that NVIDIA had a target probably on its back of $1,000. I could see a pretty epic flush coming 
if we touch a thousand and don't bounce off or don't uh, don't break through that level, I think we want to be short in around 995. I think it's probably worth about five bucks on that run uh, right now. So okay, so those are a couple plays there. Um, we can quickly look. I'm going to call back the Trade Ideas platform. And again, thank you to Michael. I mean, it's been really great having all this up here. And when he was first here, I was uncertain if I would like this um, chart and chart feature. But the fact that you could just flip it and and have all of your sort of um, uh, technicals follow it. I think that's great. So shout out to Trade Ideas for that. Uh, definitely, Michael Noss and friends. Uh, you can ask him anything you want, uh, and he'll get back to you pretty soon. Definitely on X. Follow at Michael Noss. He's probably going to show us. I can see it loaded up here. They have a great web version. I just got to get on that, and he keeps bugging me about it. So we will do that. And you know what? Hey, if he's going to bug me about it, why not bug us all? Let's go over right now with Trader Talk. It's Michael Noss. Hey, Michael, you never bugged me, so uh, no problems with that one. But <laughs> I hope not. No, it, it, it is not the case at all. But you guys have a great version. I always talk about it. It's awesome because it's mobile, too. You can check this stuff out. I remember when you were here maybe two years ago, you were like, the iPad version's coming. It's coming. This is a great opportunity to mm -hmm. have multiple screens, um, including an iPad, including your iPhone, with your web version. I see that you have it up right now. Yeah, we're we're happy with the web version, but we're not at all done. Uh, okay. I guess I can tease with people. The next thing uh, that we're going to be launching soon is we're going to be launching the ability to send orders via our paper trader on the web version, uh, which will be good for those contests that we're doing. We're, we're skipping this month, but next month we're going to do a contest where you can trade from your phone or from the web and again win $2500 in Amazon gift card money. So we keep pushing on the web front. We're not forgetting the people that are running the download, uh, but we know there's a lot of people out there that are mobile, you know, maybe yep. they're at work and they're not allowed to install something or or something like that. So uh, and as a Mac guy myself, I'm always pushing for more web version functionality as well. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Hey, give me a give me an idea. If you won that twenty five hundred, what's one thing that you would think about immediately that you'd go to Amazon and grab? Oh, I'm going to be boring, but it's probably going to be diapers, right? I've got one in diapers, another one on the way in a, a week or so. So I'm going to need a lot. A week or so? Well, congratulations on that one. I didn't realize it was coming that quickly. Well, thank yeah. you for joining us here. Um, and congratulations and, and a healthy uh, birth to you and your family in about a week's time. So uh, that means it can come anytime. So get ready for that, uh, Mr. Yeah. Michael Nas. Okay, there's a few things that you wanted to cover. Then I have a couple questions, um, and I promise you, you'll be able to handle them uh, from our <laughs> audience as per usual. Um, and we both laugh when I say that because um, every single thing I've given you, you've answered. Um, amazing. What is TWST? Oh yeah, I was actually, I was doing some scanning when I was in the green room here. Uh, just trying to figure out some things to buy for tomorrow. And this one actually popped up on my list. I, I came on this morning. I talked about short squeeze stocks. And basically, we haven't seen a short squeeze season for a while. And it seems like once a season, we have to come through and, and squeeze all these names. So I talked about how I liked Carvana and uh, Wayfair and a couple of these names. But as I was doing this scanning, and this is our anchored VWAP scan that we've actually built in conjunction with Brian Shannon, Please. where it draws the anchored VWAP for you on the chart let me actually switch charts to whatever this is and then go back to twst and you can see it drew that for me uh, this one looks interesting to me because it's drawing it off of this massive volume spike that happened here around 20 dollars a share and from that it went all the way to 40 and now it's pulled back and it's found support at that anchored view app the thing i like about this has got a 22 percent short float so i'm adding this to my my list of short squeeze type names to keep an eye on if we get back into short squeeze season so let's talk about that quickly because I know Anchor View is something that Trade Ideas has inputted beautifully into their charts. And I know that we can use Trader TV 20. People can say, hey, if I'm going to look at Anchor VWAP, this is a wicked opportunity to do that because I know there's many other chart platforms that don't have it. So what is that scan all about? Where does it anchor the VWAP? Does it pick a random spot? Does it pick a high volume spot? Or does your scanner, how does that work? Because I, I feel like it's gotten the attention of a couple people in the chat here. Yeah, so the, the thing that we separate from most other charting platforms is we want to draw the view app for you because when I remember I was at in New York on Stone Street with Brian Shannon for his book launch party, and again, he's a friend of mine. I'm in his new anchored view app book. If you read me, I'm 
way in the back as a recommendation, but we are friends. So um, I asked him, I said, okay, as a software service, what we try to solve problems, what's the problem that you're having as someone who uses Anchor View App Tool? And a lot of people go, where do I draw it from? So right. that was what we went to try to build. So we have a myriad of scans. So this particular scan I'm looking at, it's looking at the highest volume bar in the last six months or so, and it's drawing the anchored VWAP from there, and it's only looking for stocks that are near that anchored VWAP. So this one's a little bit small. You can barely see it, but it was from this massive volume bar that you hear see right. here on STNE. But we have ones for year-to-date. We have one for major, uh, you know, turning points, highs and lows, things like that, wow. where the user gets to pick what it is that they want to see the view app from, and then the system draws it for you. So again, this was built, and and you have Brian Shannon all the time, so I don't need to shout him out, but a shout out to him for his anchored view app book. But all the setups you see in the book, those are what's in the in the software right now. No, never, never, never heard of uh, this book. <laughs> Where is it, Mike? I was actually looking around Mr. for mine Mike myself. It's here in the back. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. All right. So, yeah, uh, again, a great, great system there. And again, one of the best parts about it is the access that we all have, you know, with each other. Anybody can find you at Michael Knott CMT and you can, you know, go over some of those, how to set them up, potentially send you a layout. A lot of the layouts on uh, trade ideas, of course, is over the cloud. So quick little link there and absolutely no problem uh, to get that out. Okay. Um, do you want to talk about anything else or do you, do you want to go right into some questions? Because I have a couple from the audience. Uh, let's just one thing sure, I want to take yep. a look at here on my screen. And uh, this is just something that when it pops up, I always just want to pay attention to. And that is, uh, I have this tree maps and you see Sean use the same thing. And this just shows me the sectors that I watch, which are up the most, which are down the most in the day. And one thing that was very interesting is we have ARK, ARKK, up 2%. And then we have down here, Burke B, down 0.5%. So I look at this ratio between ARK and Burke or, you know, Warren Buffett and Kathy Woods as kind of a risk on, risk off toggle. So when I see ARC, you know, dramatically outperforming on a day that Burke is down a little bit, I look at that and say, well, you know, maybe people are getting some appetite for these junkier stocks, which again may put a little bit more, um, idea, you know, um, confirmation behind my, it might be time for short squeeze season idea. Right, I actually like that. And I think that, um, you know, looking for a possible switch and just the way the market's feeling about some of these names, right? We saw Carvana went to $91, $92 today. That was another name that you brought us earlier as well. Okay, um, let's go over to our audience because we got a couple questions here and I want to thank Bears vs. Bulls for asking uh, them to me. And then we're going to go over them right now. So get ready here, Mr. Michael Noss. All right, here we go. Um, the first question coming through from Anurag. And he says, here, I'll just uh, I'll put it in our chat right now so everybody can see it. And it's going to be about UNG, uh, Michael. So call up UNG. And let's have a quick look at this one. So here it is from Anurag here. It says, can we ask Mr. Noss? So he's asking nicely. Okay, so that's good. Uh, on his views on UNG for a long swing trade off of this $15 level. So let me just call it up here. By the way, Dada, I don't know if the earnings are out or not, guys, but it is not moving at all. So I'm going to pass on that. I didn't realize it was only a $2 name. But UNG, you, myself, and many people out here have called this name the Widowmaker for good reasons. If you can't guess um, you know, which way the wind is blowing, this seems to be a hard name to trade. But UNG down here at 15, Michael, to me, it looks okay. How does it look to you? Yeah, I'm going to say the same. And, and I brought this a couple weeks ago when I was talking about the different sectors that I thought had the potential to have money rotate into when and, and if we ever see the top to the semiconductors, UNG uh, being one of those names. Now, I think you've got a clear level here at $15. Um, I Full disclosure, after I gave that presentation with you guys, I did buy some, so I'm long a little UNG around right. um, 15 or so. The... The caveat I'd always give to natural gas that Sean just said is it is the widow maker. So you can see massive gaps. When you when you talk about things that are traded worldwide, right? The price of natural gas doesn't stop because the, the stock market closes. There's a whole other world that is going to trade this, that these gaps can be pretty 
pronounced. So you need to make sure you're sizing accordingly. It, it's it's nice to say I'm going to be long uh, in front of 15, maybe 14, 50 or something is my stop. But you need to be totally OK with a gap to uh, 14 or 13 and not that have that be that big of a deal. Now, one thing I did do to try to edge this instead of just buying the ETF in itself. Right. You can take a look at names that could benefit. So I talked about during that same presentation, uh, LNG, and I did buy a little bit of this as well. You can see this downtrend line that broke. As long as we kind of hold above this 160 area, I like the look of that. And the reason that I think that this is such a um, a good way to kind of hedge the UNG exposure is because if I go over here to the monthly chart, you can see even though UNG has been getting killed, uh, LNG is still a profitable company that right. although it, it works with natural gas, it's still holding well. I do think that this will move nicely if natural gas prices move, but it's it's not going to go to zero anytime soon as a, a big, uh, I'm seeing $40 billion company. So that might be another way to take a look at it. Yeah, I don't mind that at all. And people, you give us some names as well in the lithium and uranium space, not just looking at the ETF, but also looking to see if there's any attractive names inside uh, of those different holdings as well. And again, Trade Ideas can do that for you. So guys, uh, go check that out. Okay, one more as we're running a little bit short on time here. Okay, here we go. So let's come over to the screen right now. This is a lab, Michael. Uh, this is Astera Labs. This is another recent IPO. So Chris Miller, A-L-A-B. Um, he wants to know, can you just have a look at A-Lab? I don't know exactly what the question is, but again, I would assume that we've had a beautiful move up. I mean, uh, this is one that came to IPO back on the 20th. Uh, and, and really? I mean, I don't know. If you didn't know this was an IPO, this looks like a pretty healthy chart, I would think. Uh, pullbacks being bought up, uh, definitely supported here on an early 200-period moving average. Uh, to me, this looks fine. And I'm guessing a lot of this is within uh, reason because of the recent hype that we've seen, especially into today for Reddit. So Reddit took off today, up another 34%. Um, A-Lab, again, without the... Uh, Share float issue, we have 881 million shares here, so that's gonna be a little different. But wow, another 23% up. Um, what's it looking like to you, Michael, with of course the caveat that we've only had about a week or so of trading? Yeah, this, these things are hard from a technical point of view because you're right, we don't have much data. Uh, so what I will say on something like this is, first of all, again, you need, from a technical point of view, you need a lot of data. And something, an IPO that rips like this can cause a lot of FOMO, and that FOMO can cause a lot of damage. I read a study somewhere, and I'll try to find it, and you can hit me up on Twitter. I'll send it to you once I find it. But it was a study done on all IPOs, and essentially – um, all IPOs that are out there, 80-something percent, I believe the number was, undercut their IPO price by a significant margin right. at some point in the first couple months of trading. This one uh, just opened up and ripped. Yep. So, you know, again, 85% means 15% don't. So this could be one of those that doesn't. But I'm just knowing that and knowing, you know, how FOMO and high it is, to me, that makes me very hesitant to chase this move. Yeah, I agree with that one. I, I, I feel the same way. We talked about ARM as it stayed underneath for quite a while uh, as okay. well. And now uh, A-Lab trying to get back upside right there. So uh, what's up, Fabian? Uh, back to both of us, please. There it is. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, we'll see you again, man. You'll be coming back. Oh, no, Friday is good Friday. Oh, no, I might not see you. Um, and then we're doing the podcast. Oh, my God, I'm all uh, flustered right now. Well, in case I don't see you again, best of luck with everything, obviously, there uh, with you and the family. Um, thank you for coming on one more time. It's Mr. Michael Noss. Where can they find you? Uh, Michael Noss, CMT, on, on pretty much all the good social medias. Good, we like that. And then definitely go support this guy, Trader TV 20 at Trade Ideas. So thank you, Mr. Michael Noss. Have a good one and best of luck, my friend. Thanks for having me. Have a good one. Oh, Any time. Special moments for sure in the Nas household, man. I get uh, get jealous of all of that. That those were good times in our household as well. As you get anxious about what is to come. So, uh, all right, um, all right. So here's Palantir. This is. Let's go over to Sean's tweets real quick. Next topic. So there it is, right there. Um, all right. So. <clears throat> I just want to talk about roller coasters here a little bit and not the ones that you throw up on, not the ones that give you a headache or anything like that. Although if you're invested in some names, you might want to do both of those very, very often. I just want to show you that I, I, I just feel like this is a good example here because 
you just kind of got to like the name. What's up there? There we go. Where am I? There I am. Oh, I'm underneath the horn. There, now I look like the ram myself. There it is. All right. Um, so investing right away. So this is Palantir again, a, a stock that's I believe going to get added to the S&P 500. They've met the criteria. At some point, it's going to go there. But look at everything that you've had to sort of withstand. You got you IP, a direct listed, okay? So similar to an IPO, but a direct listing. This is a 25-year-old company when they came to market, all right? Um, so nice move to the upside. They got caught up in all that Kathy Wood arc, meme craziness. This goes back to when GameStop was 500 bucks, so on and so forth. A lot of these names got excited. DraftKings, go on and on and on. Nice little dip down in, back up to 30 31,000. So you got a four times your money, three times your money, one and a half times your money. Then all of a sudden, yeah, it does look like Bitcoin, doesn't it? Then it comes back down and bases out, right? And now all of a sudden, now you're up that 2.6 times. I just feel like if you find a name that you like, you got to stay with it. There's no point in getting in and out. If you are a day trader, that's one thing. But if there's a name that you like, I definitely think you got to hold on to something. And I say that because we go back and forth now with Apple and especially with NVIDIA. Stay with some of the names, especially if you like the story. I think there's more upside coming in Palantir. I do own the stock. Um, all right. And then here goes what Michael Noss was talking about a little bit, but let's take the other side. These are some of the best IPO pops that we've ever seen in history. So these are all, um, again, tech companies. So you might say, well, what about Saudi Aramco or whatever? This is just tech names, eBay, uh, Yahoo, LinkedIn. And again, a lot of these have to do with incorrect pricing. I mean, Reddit came to market. It was not up 50% on the day. It wasn't even close, but it was up 50% from that $34 pricing. So when it ends the day at $51, then it looks like it's a bump up of 50%. But just take that consideration. Reddit playing with the big boys now, Amazon, Google, and Facebook. So make sure you follow me, man, at Trader TV Sean. Today's um, sticky note was pretty good. Oh, let's just check this out. We actually didn't call this up on the show. This is a little poll that we put out. Oh, 200 votes. All right, we'll take it. Uh, right there. Are you buying tomorrow DJT? Ramin's not here, so I can't get in trouble for saying DJ, TJ. Uh, but this is Donald's. Will there be a junior coming out? Uh, DWAC tomorrow. We'll see what happens. 200 votes. Uh, again, pretty, pretty lopsided. Many traders saying no. I think it's going to be an awesome trading vehicle. Um, that is, check my sticky note tomorrow for more ideas. Let's just see what that did in the after uh, market here. Here's DWAC. Uh, we'll be gone as of tomorrow, so a uh, nice move up, hit the 52. We had that 50 break. We only traded it twice today, um, and let me just zoom back out as we went a little too far. Good trade there. Buy the 50, out at 51, out at 51.50, out on the 50 period there of 50.50. We talked about getting out on that break. You know, pretty good break to get out on because, honestly, we cranked it back into 49. So I don't think I would have wanted to hold that against me. So tomorrow it's DJ TJ time. It's 4.33. I want to thank everybody for watching. But we're not done yet. One more, and then we'll let everybody go. We can't do this show without you, so I'm going to shout out everybody that stayed late. And I know there wasn't a huge earnings today. There's still over 2,000 of you. I say thank you to that. You can check out the podcast. This turns into a podcast as well. If you miss it, immediately watch. Go to Spotify. Go to Apple. Go to YouTube. It'll be there in a couple minutes. As soon as this show's done, we'll get that out for you. But who's here right now? Five-year plus owner for Apple. I like to see that. So that's good. Uh, yeah, we are almost finite. What's up to Bora? What's up to John? Bears versus Bulls is here. You're damn right, Bears, man. The traders do stay late. Thank you so much, Bears, for getting me some of those questions. Silver Auto's here. Tom Trades. Thank you to everybody as well. Europe is here. Dan Emmons is here. What's up, Dan? What's up to Chef Show? What's up, Chef? Uh, he's cooking it up, man. Congratulations, Chef, man. Big trades on NVIDIA. Big trades on Tesla. Those keep on coming through. What's up to Henry? Hugh is here as well. Josh is here. Hold My Beer is here. Bristol is here. Man, I, hey, I don't know if I'm a machine or not, but we're here every single day. But this week, we cut it short because there's no trading on Good Friday. No matter what, I'm going to see you here tomorrow. Big shout out to Obi. Big shout out to Dara, Fabian, Ramin, everybody that helped with this show. Thank you so much, Michael Noss, for coming through. Traders, stay late, but I'm not staying any more late than what we are right now. So ciao to everybody. I'm coming home, Marissa. I'll see you then. Go find me on Twitter, on Instagram, everywhere except for TikTok. See you then. Ciao.